We are back live with you from Advertising Week 13 right here at the Time Center in New York City. And we are here in the LinkedIn Hub doing some awesome interviews about some of the most amazing things going on this year at Advertising Week. And I have with me Brian Stempek, who is the Chief Client Officer at the Trade Desk. So you guys are a little different than some of the other people I've interviewed today, which also makes it exciting because it's good to get different perspectives and things. And um, when we started talking, you were telling me a little bit about the concept of fragmentation, which seems to be a little bit of the what I've been talking to different people earlier yeah. today about how to reach people in different touch points and different devices and across different channels and, and so on. But you guys seem to have a much more, a bigger focus on that in terms of across everything. So let's talk a little bit about that focus first and then we'll get deeper into it. Sounds that. great. So the Trade Desk, we're a demand side platform. So we're software that ad agencies use to target ads across different channels, different devices. I think if you look at a lot of themes this week, Marketing has gotten really hard, right? Like consumers yeah. are using the smartphone, they're using the tablet, they're on connected TV. It used to be you could buy American Idol, reach everybody <laughs> with- And we're done. And we're done. <laughs> we're done, we're good. Media playing is over, done for the year, good to go. Uh -huh. Now, even if you bought, could buy American Idol, which you can't, somebody's watching on their phone, somebody else is watching their tablet, are they watching on demand? It's a hard problem for a marketer to solve of, am I hitting the same consumer too many times with the same ad? Am I not hitting them at all with the ads? Am I annoying them by showing the same ad over and over again? Um, part of what we do is say, hey, for the marketer and the agency, how do you target that one consumer across devices? How do you show them an ad that's maybe they're listening to on Spotify, and then later show them an ad on online video, and then later a banner ad, then later a native ad, and tell that story together in a more cohesive way, rather than buying those things in silos. That's ultimately the problem we're trying to solve, is give an agency a one place to buy all that media and do better targeting on top of it. I think that that has been a big point that we've talked about, which is also doing that seamlessly, because I'm always kind of sitting here talking to people with the consumer voice, which is, you know, I don't want to see the same ad every time. If I turn on the TV, I'll see the ad. If I get right. onto Spotify, I see the same ad. So I think how to make that process seamless and at the same time not annoy me by seeing the same thing. So that must be a concern. It is. I mean, something that we show marketers in our reporting is how does the frequency of the ad matter in terms of whether it performs or not? It, you know, there comes a point where there's diminishing returns. Somebody sees five ads, mm -hmm. maybe they're more likely to buy your product. But then they see 10 ads, they actually might be less likely. Less likely You're saying, now hey, now this brand is annoying me. So yeah. I think there's this trade-off right now. There's this quid pro quo, right? When you look at content on the internet, you accept that it's mostly free because ads pay for it. Mm -hmm. That quid pro quo is starting to break down a little bit where I think consumers are getting frustrated. They're blocking ads saying, hey, you're showing me the same message too many times. I need you, the marketer, the agency, to fix that. It's on you to make me have a better experience so I'm not being annoyed with your, with your ad or with your experience. I think the other thing is to, um, and maybe you can tell me a little bit about this, in terms of customizing that ad in the sense that you could still be you know, um, connecting with me whether I'm on Spotify or on TV or whatever, but not showing me the exact same ad. So is there right. something to be said for the type of content or the type of ad that you are going to present me on, at my different touch points? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if I think about the automotive space is a good example. You know, long term, somebody has to buy a Mercedes, that's a long term branding challenge. You know, you want to start marketing that person five years, ten years in advance. But then if you have a signal that they might be in market for a new car, the message changes. It's no longer about Mercedes as this performance brand. Yeah. It's more about, hey, here's how safe the car is, the awards they've yeah. won. Here's the local dealership and the price. Um, maybe this consumer cares more about the interior of the car or the O to 60 or the horsepower, whatever it might be. You can now say, hey, I know what the consumer cares about. Let's tailor that message to the things that they've shown interest in. It doesn't have to be the same ad just barraging you over and over again. There is now the tech to show that variety and give the consumer a better experience. You bring up another interesting point, which always kind of freaks me out a little bit, is how do you know that I'm in the, car, in the market for a car right now? Yeah. How do you know that I care about horsepower? And I know that there is the data that is associated with all that. But to that extent, you guys are able to really hone in on and take that data and be able to present it in the sense that we know that Maha is now in the market for a car. Right. You know, or we know that Maha cares about the safety right now, you know, versus just trying to get her to like Mercedes in general. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are hundreds of companies that focus on just that. So the big guys like Axiom and Experian, Oracle, what they're doing is saying, let's take whatever signal we can and then turn that into a signal that a marketer can use. So maybe you went to kellybluebook.com and looked at a new car. Maybe they, they have a car registry that shows offline that, hey, Maha bought a car 10 years ago. She's probably due for an upgrade, <laughs> right? And so they <laughs> use that data to say, 
let's turn that to a cookie Mommy, or device ID. Need a car. <laughs> yeah, uh, anonymously to say, right. here are 10,000 people all in that same boat. They all have 10 year old cars. Let's use that to say, hey, Mercedes, if you're going to show ads to anybody, if it's you have a limited people. budget, which most yeah. marketers do, yeah. here's where you should really focus your resources. Uh -huh. Now, another thing you were, we were chatting about before we started when I was kind of trying to get an idea of what you guys do is you said, we're the pair of shoes that follow you around everywhere yeah. you go. So the question is, well, not literally, but you know, obviously online when I'm looking right. at things, if I've looked at a pair of shoes, those are the shoes I see everywhere. The idea is always, though, once again, and this is the, the delicate balance we've talked about, is not to be too intrusive. And also, if you're getting all these clear signals, how come you don't know that I already bought the shoes and I'm done, right. and, you know, and stop trying to sell me a pair of shoes? Yeah, I think there's so much media budget still being wasted when you already bought the pair of shoes, you already booked the trip, you already booked the hotel room, and you still see the ad. That's still a case of fragmentation. It means the media buyer or the agency might be using 10 different partners on that media plan, mm -hmm. and maybe one or two of them know that you bought the shoes, and the other eight don't know that. So mm -hmm. I think that's one of those growing pains that the industry has sometimes, but that's probably one of the problems we're able to fix. Just like we have a cookie or a device ID that says, hey, Maha's in the market for new shoes or in the market for a new car, we also have a cookie that says, hey, she bought the car, uh -huh. she bought the shoes, yeah. so let's stop showing her ads, or let's show you ads for something else. Here's uh, you know, a new set of tires for the car. Yeah, or a new dress to go with the shoes. A dress to go with the shoes, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Right. Well, I think on that note, then, I would want to ask you, um, lastly, is what are the trends that you see? I mean, because I think that is a good point, that there is still, you know, there are growing pains. It's still, all of these industries are so new, and every year we sit here and say, this is a growing industry, this is a new industry, yeah. and there are, you know, there are, there's a learning curve and so on. But what do you see as far as trends, or what do you see as far as kind of the next chapter, or the evolution of all of this to make it a lot more honed in and a lot better? Yeah, it's a really good question. I mean, I think um, cross-device targeting is a big one. You know, it used to be that if I want to target an ad, I can only look at the phone, I can only target the tablet, or I can only look at the desktop. Now there's technology out there that says, hey, we can build a link between the three of those to say, I know this is Maha roughly, anonymously, on a phone, a tablet, and a computer. Let's not show her the same ad. Once we know she bought the car, let's stop showing ads for cars across all three of those, mm -hmm. which has a real benefit both to the marketer, they're not wasting ads anymore, right. and to the consumer of saying, hey, my, great, my laptop stopped stop showing me car ads, but why are my phone and tablet still showing me ads? Mm -hmm. That kind of cross-device technology, that's a big leap forward, I think, for the industry. That's something we see a lot of agencies and marketers that are focused on right now. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think that is going to make a big difference, and, and making that link um, is something I've seen this year far more than, for example, last year it was all about like mobile. We're all on mobile now. Right. And this year, the, the, the kind of real marked change that I've seen is this attention to the fact that people are on three to six devices sure. all the time, and you, they don't know, you know, I don't, you know, you may be separating mobile, mobile from, you know, laptop from this and that, but right. in my world, in my user experience, in my journey, it is all connected. So I think that that is a really fundamental point to be worked on. Yeah, the consumer experience shouldn't be sacrificed just because it's hard for a marketer, yeah. right? There's technology out there now to, to fix that problem. Yeah. I think another big theme we're th seeing right now is advanced TV. So with people cutting the cord with cable operators or cord shaving or cord nevers, more people watching things like a Roku, an Apple TV, watching Hulu. Um, I think marketers are kind of scrambling to catch up to that. They yeah. used to, again, buy American Idol, buy TV in one big swath. And now, again, that fragmentation problem applies to TV more than anything else. Right. And we're trying to help them solve that. Again, using data to say, what are the programs you should buy? What are the devices in TV on a big screen, not just on a small smartphone device? Yeah. Got it. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, enjoy the rest of Advertising Week. Thanks. There's a lot going on, and there's still three and a half days. And yeah. thank you again. Thank you so much. And stay tuned with us here at the LinkedIn Hub. We will have more amazing live interviews right here from Advertising Week 13.